Retinal Rounds, episode number 194, Papillary Fibrovascular Membrane Dissection. In this episode, we focus on how to safely address fibrovascular membranes over the optic nerve during diabetic vitrectomy. We'll walk through the pros and cons of segmentation versus delamination at the nerve head and highlight strategies to anticipate and control bleeding during these maneuvers. This excellent surgical video is submitted by guest surgeon Dr. Julian Villarreal from the Instituto Mexicano de Ophthalmologia IAP. Thank you, Dr. Villarreal, for sharing this instructive case. Okay, so the surgical video has been sped up so that we can get through the entire case. You can see here that we're starting with the core vitrectomy, and you can see Dr. Villarreal is trimming back the vitreous to the mid periphery or just anterior to it. And you can appreciate here that there is a fibrovascular membrane over the optic nerve with associated peripapillary traction. And there also appears to be a sheet of posterior hyaloid that's still attached or is still adherent to the retina. Here, Dr. Villarreal is taking an outside in approach, uh, working to elevate the hyaloid in the mid periphery. Uh, and you can see also here some uh, recently applied PRP spots, which were likely performed preoperatively to decrease active proliferation and thereby decrease the risk of intraoperative bleeding. Uh, also helps to create some early retinal adhesions that may decrease the risk of retinal detachment during delamination and segmentation. So now he's addressing the membrane over the optic nerve, and you can see that it extends along the suprotemporal arcade and the infranasal arcade. And you can see he's using both hands. He's combining the forceps at some times, but mainly using the cutter. Um, the, the forceps are being used here to create space and identify the surgical plane, and then the, the cutter is being used to actually safely engage and remove the tissue. Uh, the key here, uh, of course, in diabetic vitrectomy, we talked about this in prior episodes, is to confirm that you're working within the proper surgical plane, and that's between the posterior hyaloid face and the underlying retina. Um, accessing this plane can be achieved through an outside-in approach, uh, which was the approach that Dr. Villarreal uh, initially uh, used. But if vitroretinal adhesions are tight over the macula, uh, this plane can also be accessed from membranes over and around the optic nerve via an inside-out approach. Um, an inside-out approach can be a little bit more efficient since uh, once the hyaloid is elevated in this area, the PVD can uh, more easily be extended, and that allows for safer se segmentation and delamination of more peripheral membranes. So you can see here that he's now uh, accessed the correct surgical plane, elevating the hyaloid over the macula, uh, using the cutter to lift and separate membranes, um, and uh, now is tackling this area around the optic nerve, uh, the membranes that are both on top of and around the optic nerve. Uh, and you can see uh, during this case, at times, Dr. Villarreal is using uh, forceps, but he's not using those forceps to pull up on the membranes to delaminate them over the nerve. Uh, rather, he's using those uh, forceps to better visualize the dissection planes, uh, and then he returns with the cutter for more controlled delamination. He does use the forceps to uh, delaminate some membranes more peripherally, but at least over the optic nerve, he's primarily using the cutter. So you can see here that at this point, the membranes over the optic nerve have been uh, successfully segmented and delaminated using the cutter. And now uh, Dr. Villarreal is moving on to delaminate uh, some of the more peripheral uh, fibrovascular membranes now, especially in this infronasal area. One could argue that some of these areas are not as visually critical. And so uh, a risk benefit uh, analysis should be performed to decide how aggressively one wants to be uh, when delaminating these more peripheral nasal membranes. So after the delamination is completed, the soft tip is used to clear any residual blood. Uh, we've discussed this in prior episodes, but lowering the infusion pressure to about 10 to 15 millimeters of mercury uh, can help to identify any residual oozing spots uh, that can be treated with diathermy. Now some oozing can occur over the optic nerve, uh, particularly if there is a residual stock over the optic nerve. In this case, it looks like the stock was successfully delaminated using the cutter. But if bleeding were to occur over the optic nerve at this stage, a tamponade pressure could be used temporarily. Of course, you always want to weigh uh, the pros and cons of achieving hemostasis with tamponade pressure against the risk of potential retinal or optic nerve ischemia. Now you can see that the PRP is being applied uh, quite efficiently, uh, perhaps a little bit more posterior than I typically prefer. I'll usually leave about a disc diameter uh, between the arcades and the posterior extent of the PRP, uh, and about two uh, disc diameters nasal to the optic nerve. Uh, of course, more, more posterior PRP can always be added uh, postoperatively in the clinic, um, but during the surgery, it's most important to achieve a thorough anterior application of PRP. Now finally, an air fluid exchange is performed, which helps to clear any residual blood and provides a tamponade to any small oozers, and that concludes the case.
Okay, so here's some take-home points. Now, fibrovascular proliferation over the optic nerve is very common in patients undergoing diabetic vitrectomy. And creating a space by elevating, segmenting, or delaminating tissue in this area helps to identify the correct surgical plane between the posterior hyaloid face and the retina during an inside-out diabetic vitrectomy. Now, when addressing fibrovascular proliferations over the optic nerve, there are basically two approaches one can take, either segmentation or delamination, and each has advantages and disadvantages. Segmentation involves uh, relieving the traction uh, of these papillary fibrovascular membranes around the optic nerve and any uh, traction that's extending towards the macula while leaving behind the fibrovascular stalk over the optic nerve. And this can uh, effectively reduce traction but uh, without re removing all of the fibrovascular tissue from the disc. The main downside of segmentation is that that residual stalk may ooze and can cause persistent bleeding uh, from that residual uh, fibrovascular tissue. In these cases, uh, you can apply very gentle diathermy to the tip of the stock to control bleeding, but you want to take care to use the lowest uh, energy and shortest duration possible since overly aggressive diathermy of the stock can result in thermal damage to the optic nerve. The alternative strategy is delamination of the fibrovascular membrane uh, directly over the optic nerve, and this is typically going to be performed by grasping the fibrovascular membrane with forceps over the disc and then elevating it in an anteroposterior fashion to identify and enter the correct surgical plane. The, uh, the advantage of this approach is that it can more clearly define the uh, correct surgical plane, uh, and it can also allow for a more efficient and complete fibrovascular membrane dissection during diabetic vitrectomy. But the downside is a potential risk of optic nerve injury when pulling on membranes that are tightly adherent to the optic nerve. Uh, to this point, a uh, histopathologic study was performed by Dr. Pendergrast and colleagues, uh, published in Retina in 1995, and uh, their group evaluated optic nerve stocks that were removed from 24 patients who were undergoing diabetic vitrectomy. Uh, interestingly, axons were identified in the excised tissue in about a third of patients, which confirms that nerve fibers can actually be sheared during elevation of fibrovascular membranes over the optic nerve. However, uh, despite this histopathologic finding, the presence of axons in the removed specimens didn't correlate with decreased final postoperative visual acuity, and they had a median follow-up of 21 months. So while there is uh, potentially an anatomic risk when elevating these membranes, it's still a little uncertain whether or not this limited axonal injury actually results in impacts, meaningful impacts on visual outcomes. Now, if forceps-assisted elevation of fibrovascular membranes is performed over the optic nerve, there are several precautions one can take. First, you want to avoid grasping too deeply. Of course, that can result in direct injury to the optic nerve. Instead, you'll want to aim for just a shallow purchase of the membrane uh, with a very gentle, limited anterior posterior elevation. You want, you want to do this just enough to loosen the adhesions over the disc. And so once that plane has been identified or slightly opened, you can then perform the majority of the dissection more safely using the vitreous cutter rather than uh, continuing uh, to uh, induce uh, more traction with the forceps. Now second, sometimes bleeding at the optic nerve can occur. Uh, of course, diathermy can't be safely performed in the scenario when the stock has been avulsed from the optic nerve. And in these cases, tamponade pressure may be necessary to con uh, control bleeding. But as we talked about during the case, you want to avoid long periods of tamponade pressure to avoid any ischemic uh, nerve or retinal injury. You should also keep an eye on the patient's blood pressure if you encounter bleeding in this scenario. Uh, and if the blood pressure is elevated, it's prudent to get the anesthesiologist's help to safely lower the blood pressure to physiologic levels. Overall, this is a really great case. Uh, we want to thank Dr. Villarreal for sharing it with us. It really beautifully demonstrates uh, a very thorough uh, delamination of fibrovascular membranes. And of course, we want to thank him also for giving us an opportunity to learn more about strategies for managing these membranes over the optic nerve during diabetic vitrectomy. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please visit us at retinarounds.com. There you can sign up for our email list. You'll get a notification every time a new video is posted. And if you have an interesting video or a tip or trick that you'd like to share, please follow the links on our website and you can upload your video there. Thanks so much for watching.